let me welcome you in and um, say how delighted we are for you both to be here, Oksana and I both, uh, talking to you from Australia at 6 a.m. And um, we've been looking forward to this program for a long time because of your immense expertise in this field and of course as mind mirror practitioners as well. And um, I suspect that you know what you're going to say, so without any further ado, knowing that people have read your biographies and know who you are, I would just invite you to, let's go on with the show. Now you're, very, you're very flattering. <laughs> so I want to just say that as a naturopathic doctor for the last 40 plus years, I've always been on the cutting edge of watching for holistic approaches to any neurodevelopmental or health efficiency, whatever it can possibly be, because I have a lot of um, interest in balancing neurochemistry and helping people with issues that I see as my patients come to me with a lot of different anxiety or depression or fatigue or lethargy or ways that I can tell um, that they're not having the, hi Tamara, uh, that they're not getting the things addressed from their other health professionals in the way that I can see the holistic approach. And so when I've been on that uh, quest for finding ways to help patients, and I've had over 100,000 patients in my career, is uh, I always look for something that works quickly, that's a tool that's more of a learning process that people can take home a tool to help themselves and something that makes a difference quickly, as quickly as possible. So that as a person is lying on my treatment table and they're starting to have major uh, symptoms, whether it be physical or mental or emotional, I can do something with them that immediately gives them some relief. And EFT is one that the emotional freedom techniques and all of the cousins if you want, well, the different um, energy psychology techniques are the ones that I found really work. Now, I've been involved in those energy techniques for about 22 years. First found out about emotional freedom techniques, the Gary Craig version, 21 years ago. And then Gary has been involved in it for about 17 years. And we actually got to know each other. Gary and I got to know each other by sharing the EFT programs that were back in the old days, 17 years ago, when they had to be on an interactive CD-ROM on the old computer floppy disks. So we were going through those together when we were getting to know each other, and uh, we were both on that same page. And ever since then, we were busy doing that and studying with Anna Wise, and we introduced Anna Wise to some EFT tapping. And it was something that really unlocks the, the keys. It's sort of a way of using Anna's work and then putting the tapping in with it as a way of having the physicality of all the points that are the acupuncture points that are a combination of physical and emotional and mental and spiritual too, all mixed together in an accessible tool that everyone can learn very quickly. We even teach it to three-year-olds, and they work. They um, it works really well, and they learn how to do it using little animals. Um, they use each thing where they tap as a different animal, and it's really cute. So it works well. Okay, so we're. Uh, I'm just going to run through some of the uh, background uh, on this as to why we, you know, as practitioners of awakened mind want to look at using something like EFT and uh, how that's kind of related uh, to healing. So I, we do have a slideshow here. If we have actually hooked up um, the Mind Mirror. Usually in the past we've used the Mind Mirror 3 because it's easier to work on large groups uh, and have up to 27 people at a time with uh, big Esalen groups. Um, and after Anna passed away, we started focusing more on the combination of using awakened mind training along with emotional freedom technique. And we've done hundreds of people now being measured with the mind mirror at the same time while we're training for EFT and using people, either ourselves or other EFT masters who train 
at the same time where we're hooking up the brain waves of both the participant that's being used as the demo and the practitioner, either one of us or the person training, so that we can see the geometric patterns that are happening where they merge, where the people are connected in a way that's very kind of uncanny. Uh, sometimes even um, surrogate tapping can show things that makes the whole audience just ooh and awe. I think it was uh, 10, 10 years ago in December was when Gary Craig had us come and present EFT combination with brainwave uh, monitoring in front of a whole group of 250 EFT practitioners and masters in Boston. And so that's where we got our, our start with combining the two in the general public, which then we've gotten lots of invitations to uh, having it be done around the world. So we, that's why we've gotten started with this in the last 10 years, putting the two together. So now we're gonna just run through the characteristics of what it is we're seeing when we have someone hooked up with EEGs and then why it changes when you do the tapping and what the procedure is to make that happen. So Gary, take it over there. Well, this is uh, pretty much preaching to the choir here. We're all familiar with um, what we call alpha, uh, the hypnagogic imagery and or alpha imagery. And when we begin to use the awakened mind, when we begin to train that, we begin to work with the alpha imagery uh, and we begin to see uh, this. Now, this is coming out of the alpha theta um, clinical uh, research. And so it's a little bit different than what we look at, but you'll see here the alpha brings up the alpha imagery. Uh, and so what we're beginning to look at uh, to begin with is the alpha imagery coming up. And then uh, as we go a little bit deeper, uh, the theta begins to come up, say in a house of doors uh, is probably where we're going to start seeing something like this is that we get this alpha theta uh, breakthrough, the theta breakthrough. And what this means basically is that the theta uh, amplitude will become larger than the alpha. And when that happens, we begin to see these intrinsic memories, uh, PTSD and uh, issues that are related to trauma in a person's life will begin to come up. Uh, we've seen Anna deal with this. And we're, the thing is, when we're dealing with large groups of people, of uh, 20 or 30 people at a time, which Anna often did, there was no way of, of sort of pre-screening them to see what sort of issues might come up. So it, invariably, with one or two people, they would just uh, melt down and, you know, Anna would work with them for 15, 20, 30 minutes. With uh, everyone else watching. With everybody else watching, trying to put them back together again. And this is where we would want to use the EFT. Uh, particularly if everybody in the group were trained with the EFT and the person who was having the meltdown were trained, uh, they can do what's called surrogate tapping for the person. Donna will discuss that a little bit later. Uh, but this is basically why we're interested in this uh, as Awakened Mind trainers, uh, because we're going to see this theta breakthrough uh, sooner or later. This is the emotional issues are going to start coming up. And uh, if you're not a therapist, at least this will give you some of the tools uh, that will help the people to sort of uh, re reorganize their uh, emotional state, uh, calm them down, and uh, get the stress out of the system so that they can continue on with their training. Very often, we can have people feel better within five minutes with everyone tapping along with them for whatever they're going through. For instance, if somebody starts getting really short of breath or shaking or having some other physical ab reaction, we can have the whole group, 20, 30, 80 people all at once, tapping along as if they were the person and go, you know, even though I, my legs are shaking and I'm having a hard time breathing and everybody does it together and within five minutes that other person who's having the ab reaction just calms right down and it's a very, handy tool to have so you don't have people vomiting on the floor and things like that. So. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the EFT is basically a stress management tool for most people who are not therapists. You know, therapists might use this uh, as a technique along with uh, some of the other techniques that have been trained in uh, to help people 
uh, through their emotional trauma, whatever it may be, but that takes a specialized training. Uh, this is, uh, the imagery range is now, like I say, this comes out of a, a book, the Alpha Theta Clinician's book. And this is uh, the compilation of several hundred sessions. Uh, and we can see the amplitudes of the mean amplitudes. I've got a picture. That's the book. I've got a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, of the various uh, patterns. So the, this is sort of what they've seen. And I know we've seen things a little bit differently than, than what they see. But these are the mean amplitudes for the hypnagogic uh, uh, range. You get into the biographic material, which is all of your recent memory, your traumas, your emotional. Uh, could, and it can be just fairly innocent stuff, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything traumatic. But it may be just uh, remembering a conversation from the day before or last week or last year. Uh, it may have emotional content, it may not. But frequently we see with people who are getting a state of breakthrough, particularly if they're in a therapeutic situation or if there's trauma very close to the surface, uh, we'll see that come up almost immediately. We, we know that uh, the, the mind sort of, or the unconscious kind of hands you what you're ready for mm -hmm. uh, at, at any particular moment. Uh, this. As you can see, the, the amplitude down here, now they weren't looking at gamma, so you know we don't know what the gamma range was. This is the low beta uh, range from 13 to 20. And uh, as you can see here in this, what they call perinatal, this is the early birth trauma. This is what uh, Stan Groff described as the four different stages of birth uh, and early uh, childhood. You have to remember that uh, a newborn uh, has about 85% of their brain waves are delta. Uh, and so during that first year, particularly, anything that occurs to them is going to be laid down in delta. Uh, but what we see here actually is the beginning of an evolved mind. We see that delta closing off, theta getting larger, uh, the alpha getting larger, uh, but you still have that theta breakthrough here. And then finally, we get into the transpersonal uh, patterns. Uh, we can see the uh, theta gets a little bit larger. And actually, the, the theta is larger, and the delta is not quite as large, but it's larger than the alpha. So that that transpersonal material, uh, seeing the clear white light or whatever uh, may be considered transpersonal, uh, begins to come up there. Now, these, like I say, are mean amplitudes. Uh, we'll see things a little bit differently. Uh, than what they have here, but this is just sort of the breakdown in the clinical world of alpha theta training. And the, the list just does have the capacity for those statistics to be read and measured as far as an average for a certain section of the session. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, uh, you know, I, I've not used it before. I, you know, I'll go through and I can see the, uh, you know, the summary of a particular section. But it will give you the, the right now statistics. And with this sort of uh, arrangement here of looking at this pattern, we can go back now and look at that data as well as another uh, aspect of working with the uh, mind there. And so this is the uh, book which I've recommended before to Judith, the Alpha Theta Training for Clinicians. Uh, excellent book has a, a lot of good material in it, and it also has some articles in there about Max Cade, uh, because they recognize that the Alpha Theta work came not only out of Penniston, but also Max Cade in Green and Green. Uh, They're looking at things a little bit differently uh, than Penniston, but Penniston published first in, in journals. One of the things that uh, was not published by Penniston uh, is what happened during the session. Uh, so that he would talk about the alpha theta breakthrough, but he didn't talk about the fact that after the person came down uh, through that breakthrough, they would have a, an hour session of therapy afterwards. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, he's working with them uh, clinically as well. So it wasn't just that they had this material coming up and then they were recovered somehow magically from whatever was going on. They actually used that material 
for the person to gain greater insight as which, to what was happening. Which is really good to do immediately after the alpha theta crossover happens because you have about a five hour window for reframing at that point. So this is basically a memory reconsolidation. Uh, this is the second reason, a uh, big reason that we want to use EFT. Um, now I'm not familiar, I don't know how familiar everybody is with memory reconsolidation. It used to be believed uh, from Freud up until practically the beginning of the century that all of these intrinsic traumatic memories that were laid down, particularly in early childhood, were just there forever. You know, you could really do nothing about them, you just sort of layer over them uh, in one way or another with different types of therapies, you're talking about things, getting different insights as to what was going on. Uh, but they would never really go away. What they found with memory reconsolidation, first in animal research and now in humans, uh, is that when you bring this information up through theta, uh, and you have uh, you know all of this trauma sort of laid out in front of you in one way or another, it makes the uh, the memories very very labial, very malleable, uh, and so you can work with them. And as you begin to work with them, you reframe them, and then the, that uh, changes the memory. It takes the emotional charge off the memory. The memories may still be there, but it no longer has that effect. So this is basically the stages that people go through when they're going through memory reconsolidation. Your buried memories are reactivated. Uh, they become malleable. Uh, then the memory undergoes a change because a therapist or the techniques that you're using help to change that in a way that's uh, kind of a, a different reframe of what's happening. And then, you know, as people go on, there is no longer uh, that emotional charge on things. The tigers become just paper tigers that are not threatening anymore. Yeah, so here we have, uh, you know, just an outline of how uh, EFT uh, helps with that. And first of all, you're doing the alpha-theta relaxation. Uh, you bring the alpha-theta crossover. Uh, the, I say ACEs, that's uh, adult childhood adverse. adverse, I mean, adverse childhood experiences that adults uh, still have that are sort of contributing to their issues, whatever they may be. Uh, and then you do the uh, EFT. Now, EFT, and I think Don will talk more about this also, is that the when you begin to tap on someone, and this has been shown in fMRIs, uh, when you tap on these particular points in EFT, it calms the amygdala. You can actually see on an fMRI that the amygdala, amygdala activation will quiet down. Yes. So as you tap, you do two different things. You begin to change that activation of the amygdala and calm the emotional content, mm -hmm. which you would have, uh, let's say, your normal reaction. You didn't have a, you're into a traumatic uh, have, have a reaction of some sort. Now suddenly you're calming it down. Uh, so the memory's there, but it doesn't have that charge on it. And then with the tapping process itself, uh, as you begin to use the person's words, you help them to reframe what happened to them in a more adult way. And so at the same time, you're reframing these traumatic issues very quickly and calming the amygdala and this allows for complete memory reconsolidation sometimes within minutes uh, or a half hour. Um, in fact it's first started out with the uh, half hour uh, uh, phobia cure when it first came out back in the 80s and I remember reading about it and seeing ads for it uh, and I thought that's crazy you can't cure a phobia in half an hour. But basically, that's what was happening. They were using the uh, acupuncture system from China. Because when we first went over to China in the 70s, uh, therapists would ask the people, they would say, well, the Chinese, well, how do you deal with these emotional issues? And they say, oh, we just use needles. Uh, and then we began to think about that. Some of the therapists began to think about that and thinking, well, maybe if we just tapped on or used these combinations of these points, that the Chinese used, maybe it would heal people the same way. 
Uh, and so they did, and they found that it, it actually did work, and they could get uh, cure of a phobia within a matter of minutes. Literally. And then, then Roger Callahan was the one that started the thought field technology, and he was the one that put together algorithms of how to deal with specific emotions using tapping instead of needles. And that's where Gary Craig came along, being an engineer. Uh, he learned, oh, it was like $10,000 at the time to learn all of this Callahan technique. And he thought, well, there must be an easier way of doing this, being an engineer. So he reduced everything down to six points. Eight, eight, eight points. points. And uh, found that they work just as well as all of these complicated algorithms that uh, Callahan was using. And then he began just basically giving it away. Uh, he would charge $60 and he'd have, you know, 500 people in the audience. <laughs> And uh, so, oh, he, and he gave away millions of downloads of the 80-page book, the manual too, which is still being given away online. So this is uh, basically the uh, one of the books, Memory Reconsolidation. This is the second book on memory reconsolidation. There is a very good article. This is a series of articles uh, in this book. A uh, very good article by. Uh, David Feinstein, who is one of the founders of energy psychology. His wife is Donna Eden. Uh, Donna Eden, exactly. And uh, he goes through why he feels uh, EFT works as a tapping sequence, and why energy psychology works in terms of memory consolidation. So I've just given you kind of a thumbnail sketch of what he has to say in there. Uh, this is the first book that came out on memory consolidation, Unlocking the Emotional Brain. Uh, I would recommend uh, anyone who's interested in therapy that this is probably the most important psychological insight, therapeutic insight that we've had in the last hundred years. Bruce Ecker. So um, here we are. Here are the tapping points. This is how you begin to learn how to tap, and Donna will take it from here. So this is what they call the basic recipe. Very, very basic. There are other parts that you can add to this that add a little bit more um, tool to it, but this is the one you can teach any three-year-old. And you can even leave out the finger points. You can just use the one that's on the side of the hand right here where they call it the karate chop. KC for short means karate chop here. And uh, what they do with children is they say, you know, if you go to karate class and you're breaking a board with your hand like this, you're breaking through whatever's bothering you by going, Hi, yeah, like that. So you don't have to do it very hard. You just tap it gently there. And what that means when you're tapping here is it's bringing the issue up to the forefront of your mind. It's like setting it up where your, your computer screen now shows what it is you're working on when you tap here. You're bringing up the actual um, aspect of what the goal is that you want to break through. And you're also getting rid of what's called psychological reversal, which is the part of your brain or your programming that actually is attached to the issue that it doesn't really want to let go of. Psychological reversal is like um, secondary gain from, for instance, I'm, I'm handicapped and I need other people to pay attention to me and, and wait on me. And if I get over this handicap, I won't have that much attention anymore. That's psychological reversal, and tapping here helps to reverse that back to normal where you actually do want to get over the problem. A lot of those, those uh, unconscious reasons for not getting over something are definitely unconscious. So when we start tapping, we notice when we start this point at the beginning that if we have someone hooked up on the, the EEG, we're watching them on on the mind mirror, whether it be the old one or the ballistas, we notice that right away the, um, the brain waves start to become more active, more busy, more open, and they're like receiving all this download and information. And when that happens, we know that it's opening up the doors that need to go to the places that the warehouse needs those memories unloaded from. Then while we're tapping here, this is the place where we're also reprogramming the antidotes to the issues. Now all the antidotes are in the category, of, like here's the issue over here, 
and here's the antidote. And when you pile the antidotes onto the issue, it's basically all in the categories of self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, self-love, compassion for oneself, and gratitude. So if you get those in, in the mix on top of the issue that's the problem, whether it be body, mind, or spirit, then it starts to reprogram and reconsolidate the memory. So that's the reason why the setup phrase, which is showing there tapping on the karate chop point, the setup phrase always has some of those aspects. So even though I have this stress or anxiety over my relationship and my husband just keeps on bugging me, I know I can love and accept and, and have compassion for myself. So that's the basic beginning of anything. Then you go through all of the other tapping points that are on the chart here with um, any order you want, one side or bilateral, whichever way you prefer. And you do each one of those by saying the reminder phrase of, I'm stressed over whatever it was you started with, uh, or just this issue, or my difficult husband, or this relationship issue, just, just as a reminder. So you're tapping it away without having to reiterate a long phrase. You just say it, preferably if you say it out loud, it works better for audible release of the memory than it does just thinking it alone. But thinking it alone gives you a big, a big chunk of it. It's almost as if, if, you're, if your ears listen to your mouth saying it out loud, your molecules also hear it and let it in deeper, more deeply than they would if you only thought it. Thinking the, the affirmation, thinking the issue versus the, the resolution gives the, the resolution maybe an option of being able to get better, whereas saying it out loud gives the resolution more of a direct command. So that's the reason why, especially if you have auditory channeled people, that auditory goes down into either an alpha or a theta state, it really helps to hear themselves say it out loud because so many people can't love themselves easily. They'll say something like, oh, I, I can't say that. Like you say, okay, tap here and say, even though I have this issue, I deeply love myself. They'll go, I can't say that. That's silly. I can't say that. So then we'll have to come, we'll have to backpedal and say something. Even though I have this issue, I'm really okay. And they can handle that. And little by little, they'll get down to where they can actually accept that they can love themselves. It just takes a little while. They have to kind of do it in layers sometimes. So then once they've done all of the different tapping points, they take some deep breaths. And we've seen this happen before where in one round, what we call a round, uh, we also add the one at the top of the head. And then the fingers are optional. You don't have to do all of those. And then this nine gamut spot here is one that involves some eye motions and some humming and some counting to get left and right brain working, which is all optional. That's one of the longer forms. But when you do the short form in one, what we call one round, I tap here, then I do the rounds while just doing the reminder phrase, immediately the EEGs start to change. The ones that were high amplitude, like for instance, you had to zoom out to about 30 or 100 microvolts because um, because you couldn't get it all on the screen. All of a sudden, in one round, it goes down about to one third of, it was be of what it was before. So if you were out to 100, it goes down to 30. If you were out at 30, it goes down to 10, you, and so forth, in just one round. And that just shows that the brain is operating more efficiently, and it doesn't have all that energy bursting out of the cortex. It just shows that things are starting to be more calm inside. And if we have you hooked up to a heart coherence monitor, the heart rate variability starts to get into the more coherent zone. And that happens sometimes within the very first round of doing this tapping. So it's really worth doing. And, and we're talking about here the upper beta. We're talking about uh, the gamma range of 30 to 40. Uh, so you're looking at basically the hourglass 
uh, and we're bringing that upper hourglass down. We're beginning to get more alpha coming out uh, as they begin to do this, and we begin to calm down and we get down into the beta one uh, region of the 30 to 20 hertz. So uh, um, can I ask you a question, Gary? Yeah, yeah. When, when you see that hourglass, are they with eyes open? Yes. So and then they're all, having all this is basically done, basically done with eyes open, though though we can see it also with eyes closed. We'll have them close their eyes as well, uh, sure. so that you'll see less less alpha, particularly if there's trauma involved. In fact, what happens with the alpha is that if you have trauma, it can be recent trauma or it can be you know childhood trauma, uh, but if you see the alpha flare out and then all of a sudden it's squashed uh, or you have no alpha coming out at all when they close their eyes, that's generally an indication of repressed trauma of some sort. Uh, could be recent, it could be, you know, early childhood. Or addiction. Or addictions. So, you know, particularly addictions uh, have little alpha. Right. And that's usually related to the fact that uh, there is some sort of adverse childhood experience going on when people have addictions. That caused the addiction in the first place, yes. So this is the uh, sequence here of how to set yourself up for tapping. So the first one is you choose what you want to work on that's creating some specific emotional or physical pain. And you want to be specific while you're tapping on this karate chop point. And that is... Um, Instead of Googling abandonment on Google and getting millions and millions of hits, you say, the time when my mother kicked me out of the car and left me beside the road and drove away when I was six years old because she wanted me to stop being a brat in the back seat. And then, of course, she did come back to get me, but that was a very traumatic abandonment issue. Be really specific about when it happened and what the story was kind of set up the movie, a tiny little movie of that five minutes that I could no longer see my mother's car because she pretended to leave me behind was the trauma. So go back to that specific memory and, and then uh, find out what that intensity was when you remember it. So it can be possibly on a scale of one to 10, what intensity does that feel right now, you know, 70 years later? So if, you, if they say, uh, oh, that's still a, a nine or a 10, or it's a 13, um, you know, just to be uh, exaggerated, <laughs> yeah. Um, then you know where you started from. Then you start tapping on the setups, the setup phrase, which is, even though my mother left me and I was abandoned, I deeply accept myself and I love myself and I can forgive myself and the whole situation for what happened and say it three times through while you're tapping on the karate chop point, and then tap gently through the sequence of the tapping point, saying the reminder phrase, yeah, I got left behind. I was left behind. And, and go through the reminder phrase, do it once or twice, and stay tuned into the memory around the energy of the pain. And then take a nice deep breath at the end of going through those levels of tapping, and then it just asks, okay, what intensity does it feel like now? Where does it feel? What, what is it? Maybe the abandonment sadness turned into a different emotion. Um, maybe there's not, not the same. It's a different one, but it's a different number. And then go back and tap on that and say something like, even though I'm still at a six, and I was a 10 before, and I still remember how mad I was when my mother drove off and left me. I deeply accept myself, and I can love and accept myself and the whole situation and forgive myself and my mother and the whole situation. If you want to go there, you don't have to, you don't have to get to the whole package all at once. You can do it one little piece at a time. And then be specific about that and then tap on that. Now it's turning into more sadness. How could she have been so stressed that she would even go ahead and do something like that? And then you can actually kind of start reframing everything. Then go to the possibility of if the number doesn't go down to a one or a zero, then you might want to do the extra tool, which is this one here, the nine gamut point. And while you're tapping on that, you add a few different components. So one of the things is you open your eyes, you close your eyes, you keep tapping here the whole time. 
Then you look down to the right, down to the left, make your eyes go around in a big circle clockwise, then go around the big circle counterclockwise. Try to remember how to, how to remember to breathe slowly and deeply, kind of a, a heart mass kind of coherence type breathing at the same time. Hum a little tune, and then count to five. One, two, three, four, five, and then hum another tune, and then just be done, and then check in and see how you feel. And that adds another layer of um, resolution to lowering the intensity when the intensity won't go down fast enough by itself. And that's basically it. That's all there is to it. A lot of the techniques uh, in EFT come out of NLP, uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming. So some of the, the techniques, what they call the tearless trauma technique, uh, would have you go through a, a traumatic memory a little piece at a time. Rather than being flooded with the entire memory, uh, you would just take, you would start out and say, okay, it's a nine, but okay, I just want you to go to five. I just want you, don't go over five on your scale here. And then when people start getting up to five, you stop them, you have them back up, you work with just mm -hmm. that little piece until that, they've got that down to one or zero, and then you go to the next little piece of the memory. Gary Craig was the one who started doing it with NLP because he's an NLP master, and he would do things called the movie technique, where he'd say, let's just cut out the whole movie except for that one moment right there where you can see the part that only takes you up to a five. So it was just minimizing just the little snippet of the movie, not the whole childhood, just not even the whole scene, just one little piece of it. And then let's take that far away up onto this big movie screen on the horizon where you can be far enough back from it that it doesn't affect you that much. Something like that, like NLP would do. So if you see someone uh, does a theta crossover and they're suddenly flooded with a lot of emotion, you have them back up. Okay, let's go back to the very beginning. What, what can you actually talk about right now? What can you look at without being flooded with so much emotion? And just work on that. You, you may not even be able to get there. Uh, you may have to do a more general tapping on what's going on just to calm them down again enough so they can begin to look at what's going on. One of them is just to come to the here and now. Say, okay, we're in this room. We're sitting here at the room in yeah. Esal at Esalen. We're looking around, we're seeing the, the pictures on the walls and the, the view out the window, and then tapping on that. I know I'm sitting here at Esalen and I'm safe in this group of people who are compassionate. And even though I have these feelings, I know I'm safe and I'm okay. And then tap that one in first before getting to the next layer. And the nice thing about working with groups is that when the group knows how to tap, then they can all tap for the person who may be having this every reaction or emotional issue that's come up. Uh, so everybody will tap along with them because everybody may have similar sorts of issues uh, that are sort of underneath the, the uh, unconscious there that haven't quite come up with them. Uh, so they begin to tap on that. And actually what we've seen is that as people tap for someone else, and actually the, we've seen this on stage with Gary Craig, they had, he had an audience of, what, 100 people or something? 200. Yeah, quite a, quite a large audience. And uh, the fellow that was being, had issues with his daughter, and you know, we won't go into all the details, but he had some problems. Uh, and he didn't tap at all. And yet we could see his heart come into coherence almost immediately. And we could see the brain waves begin to calm down uh, as everybody in the audience tapped for him. And that was the brand new surrogate tapping that Gary Craig started back in July of 2007. Mm -hmm. And he had a mere 10 people join him up at his location in Northern California at someone's living room. And I got to be one of the 10. And we were all practitioners or certified in EFT or masters of some sort in, in EFT. And he trusted us to be able to do things in a way that would be. Um, a, a good experiment. So we all went together and we had every person, all 10 of us, got a chance to have surrogate tapping done for us, including Gary Craig himself. And he, he would have each one of us go out of the room and actually take a little walk while we tapped for whatever the issue was. One of them was just not being able to uh, bend the knee as far as 
he wanted to. And then when he came back from having the surrogate, people say, okay, even though I am so-and-so and my knee won't bend, I deeply, completely accept myself and tapping as if we were them, starting from ourselves. Then within 15 minutes, the person would come back in the house and then we check their knee and it bent, you know, like twice as much as before. And so this went on all day long. It was an all day experience. At lunch break, I said to Gary Craig, I, I had not met him in person before. So this is my first meeting with him in 2007. And so I said, well, I have this little machine out in the trunk of the car that would actually show the brainwaves changing as we're tapping. Would you be interested in seeing that during lunch break? He said, yes, of course. He's an engineer. He wants to see everything. So after lunch, we brought it inside and hooked up one of the next demonstrators. I said, well, in this case, she can't go for a walk outside, so we'll have to do it right here, but we'll still do the surrogate tapping. And so we'll all be present, but she'll just sit there with the EEG monitor on her head, and then we'll tap for her. Well, within the first round of tapping, the memory she had as a child, as a teenager, watching her own father be shot and killed by the SWAT team who showed up at their house when he was having a, a violent uh, uh, alcoholic um, uh, episode of wave brandishing a weapon around. And it turned out later the weapon wasn't even loaded, but the police didn't know that. And they shot him and killed him right before her very eyes as a teenager, 17. And she was in her 50s and still carrying that horrible pain and memory of losing her father in such a violent way. And in one round of surrogate tapping, the first thing that happened was this huge amplitude of really extreme busy brain waves that were so far out it was hard to get them zoomed out enough on the old mind mirror three to even see it on the screen within one round it came down to about a 10 and then we did some more tapping and then the i i gary craig was sitting right beside me and i i i had my little pointer and i said okay see right there there's the theta. There's another aspect coming up. Okay, see right there? There's the alpha. That's the alpha bridge. It's making sense between the conscious and the subconscious. Oh, see right there? That's delta. Look at There's the delta. It's coming out. That's from the really deep unconscious memories. And I just kept on whispering to him as she was going through her process, which took about a half an hour was all. We tapped with her on every aspect of every part of that memory that she'd been holding her whole life. Within that half an hour, she got down to basically a zero on her um, intensity score. And the brain waves were absolutely in a bliss ball of awakened mind and evolved mind pattern without doing any meditation or any anawise exercise, any kind of hypnagogic state or anything all it was was the tapping alone and she went straight to a beautiful awakened mind and evolved mind back and forth uh, intermittently and so when she was all done and she was smiling and happy and released and ready to go on with her life we took the brainwave machine you know we 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 shut it down and, and unhooked her and gary craig looked over at me and grabbed my shoulder and he said i love you and i love your machine so, <laughs> so I, I, uh, he said, could you wear little white coats and your husband and you <laughs> and, and do this and scientists up on the stage with little lab coats on and we hook up demonstrations and show it on a great big projector screen and show it to the whole audience of all the EFT masters. This is brand new. He'd just come up with this surrogate program that never had been taught before where we could make a difference in the quantum field for the person without them even having to be touched and do it from a distance and then getting to see the changes in real time on TV, basically up on the big screen and to show it to the whole audience that this stuff that he came up with really worked. So he was all excited about having proven that surrogate tapping worked and at the same time being able to show it to the audience. So that's how we ended up doing horses afterwards, was a surrogate horse tapping. Right. So now we have a series of pictures of Photoshop, uh, you know, an iPhone 
of a, a something we did. Uh, how many years ago was that? Oh, it's about eight years ago. Eight years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. And the problem is, is that all of the work that we did, the early work on EFT, we did on the old Mind Mirror Three. So we had to draw everything, and we generally would hand the papers back to the people and, and we not didn't keep take, the records Yeah, ourselves. we didn't. We didn't take photocopies. We were somewhere in England or Prague or someplace where there was no photocopy machine to keep a copy for ourselves. So this is a very interesting uh, surrogate tapping that uh, Gwyneth Moss is, does a lot in England with animal trainers over there and uh, working with animals who have issues besides human beings. So, uh, so and, this is this is actually a, 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 a hand-drawn um, pattern of the horse trainer when she was just being herself. And you can see that you know, there was a little bit of beta up there, but she had a really nice awakened mind. She had um, a lot of alpha and theta and delta, very large, wide, 30 amp, um, you know, attenuated out to a 30. So you could see that she had a very nice, consistent hemispheric balance and pattern. So that was without thinking about this horse named Barney, who was having a problem with bullying, he would um, use his nose and whack his trainer right in the belly and almost knock her over. Uh, he was um, he would um, resist any kind of um, guidance with his bridle and halter. He wouldn't go the direction he was trying to go, and he was a great big horse, the kind that like a Clydesdale. So then we hooked up Gwyneth and the trainer named Heather. And Gwyneth was the trainer, the EFT master. And this was her pattern with all of that hundred, way out at a hundred when he was saying he didn't like that bridle in his mouth because it tasted horrible. Now, the reason we knew what Barney was thinking is we had the trainer pretend to be Barney and we had Gwyneth be the therapist. So we were... We had two mind mirrors going at once, one on Heather, the trainer, being Barney, one on Gwyneth, being the trainer, being, being the therapist for Barney. And everybody in the audience, or about 80 people, were all tapping along together, helping Barney and helping the trainer to get through to Barney's problems. So then right here is Barney the horse. He, um, he, uh, the trainer, this was Heather, the trainer, who was hooked up. And Barney the horse was just um, really uh, confusing. You'd kick him forward or try to hold him back. And he, he didn't like all of the confusion and the whips and the sticks and the spurs. And it all hurt. And his, his mouth hurt. And he was confused and erratic. And it was all over the map. But what was mostly very unusual was that everything and Heather, who you saw what Heather looked like before she was being Barney, went down to this huge delta and not very much beta, as you can see where it says feeling the pull. I want to wrench my head down and get rid of this, this bridle, and I want to just gallop away and be free. And this brainwave went clear down to 100. Here it is right here, the one that says 100. Run away, thinking, shut off, no thoughts shut off brain, feeling hot and panicky. Now, Gary and I were both picking up this weird brainwave pattern, one with the therapist and one with the surrogate Barney. It was mostly Delta. We had to zoom out to the 100 attenuation, a little, you know, quite a bit of Theta, but obviously lots of Theta almost to the edge, but Delta, especially over on the left side there, was so big, we both thought that our mind mirrors were broken or that they were picking up uh, some kind of artifact or that some interference was happening in the, the field or something. We couldn't figure it out. But then we realized that it was actually measuring correctly. And what was happening is that both of the women hooked up had turned into horse brainwaves because <laughs> Anna herself showed us that horses mainly are in delta and theta when she hooked up the horses back in the day. Yeah, we didn't we didn't realize that uh, you know that we weren't having issues until we compared notes. And then it was this we were both getting this. I I actually left my post and walked over to see 
what Gary's machine was doing on the other person. And I said, yours is doing the same thing. And they were both getting all this huge delta. And then at the end, finally, after tapping on, on Barney, and he went back to his inner child, and he was in the pasture with his mother, and he had some trauma, and it all got tapped out. It took about a half an hour. And then at the very end, um, this is Heather's brainwave showing that Barney was a little, it was down to a, a, a 30 rather than 100. And he had more alpha there and a little bit more uh, balance. And then she was channeling him because she was a, 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 a horse whisperer and she could channel what he was thinking. And so um, she, she said that at the end when he got to be cheerful and uh, then he just kind of gloated to himself. He says, I finally got them trained. In other words, his master was being trained by him. <laughs> and uh, his owner was named Lindsay. And Lindsay is actually kind of nice. And I am a little bit sorry now for how I've been acting. So then the next day, Heather came back again to the, the class. It was a weekend class. And she said she'd gone out to um, do a training session with Barney. And he was completely calm. He didn't do any kind of um, defensive action. He didn't try to bump her or do anything to try to fight the bit. And, uh, and then we checked in about a year later, and Barney was a changed and transformed horse just from 80 people surrogate tapping on him. Wow. And this is how it showed up on the mind mirror. So we know that we actually were watching Barney. So um, we have uh, also had, uh, we have to end this pretty soon, but we've had a lot of um, usefulness coming from Donna Markova and her different triggers to states of consciousness. And we want everyone who would like to get this slideshow to have access to this chart. This is the chart that shows what your beta picks up. If, if your beta is more in the kinesthetic, it's all genetic, of course, you're born this way or if the beta is more auditory, or if the beta is more visual. And then what triggers alpha? Does the alpha get triggered more by kinesthetic, or by auditory, or by visual? And then what is theta most accessed by? Is it accessed by kinesthetic on the bottom there left, or the middle one, if the, kines if the auditory is what triggers theta, or if the visual triggers theta. And you can go through this list and see which, land, which one you personally land in. This is all about nature genetics. It's not about nurture or the way you were raised. It's just the way you're born, like brown eyes or blue eyes. And it's really useful for training awakened mind because if we can see that someone just cannot get any alpha bridge when you lead them through a visual meditation ex exercise, then they're probably um, like a, a theta visual. And if that's true, they're going to have everything that's visual zone, kind of get fuzzy and not be able to be seen clearly. So then you have to change your languaging around when you're taking people down through these exercises to be able to get them to trigger which parts are missing. And that's better to be, be done on a private session than it is in groups. But what we always say in groups when we're training, awakened mind training, is uh, in case you can't see this clearly, don't think that you're doing it wrong. You're just stacked that way. And it's genetic. And just imagine the feeling that you would get if you were seeing that. Or imagine what that might sound like. And then see if that takes you where we're taking you rather than trying to do it the way all people who are stacked with ability to visually access quickly and easily, you don't have to do it their way. Maybe you're just gonna smell it or you're, gonna, you're going to taste it. And in that case, it's okay. You're just, that's just the way you are. And so we give them permission to do it differently. And so I think that's, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I was going to say as a naturopathic doctor is that if, um, if I see that someone doesn't create a lot of alpha and I see that they possibly have um, some addictions in their past or uh, some anxiety or depression, I often go to uh, the training I have with neurochemistry balance and knowing that they might need more serotonin or 
more nutrition that will develop better serotonin or some herbs. Or um, for one thing, I send people a link on their emails that gives them the Eric Braverman test for neuro, neurotransmitting balance. And I'd be happy to send that link to everyone and everyone can do it. Because if you do the eight little sections of the questionnaire, it's just online, and you get the results of that, and you see that your numbers are a bit off, then there's ways of changing that just by lifestyle changes and certain nutrients. So that's always a piece that I like to throw in there when we're teaching workshops, and we're teaching tapping and brainwaves and um, how to basically own your own body and have a good life and body, mind, and spirit all working together, there's that nutritional and lifestyle component that needs to be thrown in there. At least that's my belief, because that's what I deal with. Okay. So I think that pretty well so covers that. that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, well, at least I think Donna has to run, but I'll stick around to answer any questions you might have. Are you gonna lead us through uh, an EFT exercise? Um, yes, let's do oh, that. Okay. I, I have time for that. So first of all, just take a big, nice, deep breath and notice how deep your breath is. Notice if it feels like a percentage of your lungs is maybe not quite as complete as a 100% breath would be, and then rate that. So for all of you watching this as a uh, after um, seminar, you're going to be watching the recording. Just do that right now and rate your amount of breath from 100% uh, down to you know, whatever level of percentage you think you're breathing. Do you have one, Judith? Uh, I think I'm doing 100. Good for you. I'm That's all the great. way. Good. How about you, Oksana? I think I'm around 70, 80, not more. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So this is what you would do if, if you were needing more. Judith, you're good, but... You would just do this, Oksana. Just tap right here. Is it right or left hand? Does it matter? It doesn't matter. You can even both do both hands together at once if you want. Like this. So you get them both. But one or the other is fine. If you're driving, you can hit it on the steering wheel. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm driving and I want to do something. But anyway, you just go, even though I don't completely feel that I have 100% of my breath. Say that. Uh, even that. though I feel that I don't have hundred percent of my brain of my breath, and I would like to be able to breathe more completely, and I would like to breathe more completely, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though my breath isn't at a hundred percent, even though my breath isn't at a hundred percent, I accept myself anyway. I accept myself anyway. My breath could be better. My breath could be better. But I love myself anyway. But I love myself anyway. And then now start doing this. This little constriction in my breath. This little constriction in my breath. My breathing isn't complete yet. Uh, my breathing isn't complete yet. I would like to breathe more deeply. I would like to breathe more deeply. Something is stopping my breath from being complete. Something is stopping my breath from being complete. I want to breathe better. I want to breathe better. And then right here on the, on the collarbone, this yes. breath constriction. This breath constriction. Now reach around under your arms and tap underneath your arms down here, kind mm -hmm. of where your bra strap would go. Mm -hmm. This breathing constriction. What was it? This breathing, this breathing constriction. This breathing constriction. Of course, you can make all this up yourself. Now, the yeah. top of your head is a good place to finish up. Breathing better. Breathing better. And then just kind of tap yourself on the chest, this place right here, the sore spot where it says sore spot on the chart. That one's a good one to finish up with, yeah. too. Now, take a nice deep breath and see where it lands. Oh, it does, that feel? does feel much freer. It's surprising. Uh -huh. It does feel much like my lungs are bigger and it's freer breathing. I can't explain, but it's... So that, that little experiment is an easy one to do in a large group, in a large group audience, because it's very 
um, unthreatening. It doesn't bring up any childhood issues or traumas. It's just, oh, well, I could breathe better. And then you get a chance to have a number that you start with the number that you began. And then you get a better number at the end in about 80% of the time. And you have people raise their hand. You say something like, how many people didn't notice any difference whatsoever? And then you'll have those people raise their hand and you go, okay. Then that's when we can go through and do something a little deeper, which we then go, even though there might be, uh, you know, tapping again and uh, some remaining constriction in my breath, that, that whatever that is that only went from, say, for instance, a person might have started out with only 50 and they only went to 60 and they want to be at 100, then you go, even though there's this remaining constriction and I'd like to be better, I still deeply and completely accept myself. You go through that three times. Then you do another round because one round doesn't always do miracles. Mm -hmm. And if, if you need to do another round, then you go to this nine gamut spot right here mm -hmm. and you go, uh, Open your eyes, close your eyes, look down to the left, down to the right, keep breathing, go around in a big circle with your eyes, eyes open or closed, it doesn't matter. Go around in a big circle the other direction, hum a little tune, you know, like five seconds, and count to five, one, two, three, four, five, and then hum a little bit more. Okay, and then you're done. And now take a deep breath, go like this and feel your chest, chest and See if it totally expands more and then go, okay, now how many people actually felt a difference? And then usually the ones that raise their hands the first time go, oh yeah, it does feel more free now. Mm -hmm. And that's usually about as quick of an experiment as you can show. Now you can do something like, how about if somebody in the audience has a headache? Okay, who in the audience might have a pain right now? And they raise their hand. You go, okay, let's all be Betty. Okay, then when you're doing a, uh, a surrogate borrowing of benefits for yourself and for the Betty that has the headache. You tap on the chest and you go, I'm being Betty right now. Okay, so I'm doing this for Betty and it'll it'll help me too. So even though I have this headache, have headache as if I were Betty, I deeply and completely accept myself, I am okay. And then you do that three times, then you tap through the Betty's headache, but you know, Betty and her headache. Then you ask at the end, if Betty's headache is any different, if it's gone from a nine to an eight or a seven or a three, then you might do it one more time and then maybe Betty's headache will come back down even further. Maybe it'll even be gone. Then you go back to now I'm Donna again. Because if you stay Betty, you might end up with some of her issues because the quantum entanglement stays with you. So you really want to go back to being yourself after you've done some good deed. How do you how do you do that? Do you just say you just tap yourself and go? Like, My name anymore. I am Donna. Yeah, I am right. Donna. I'm yeah, okay. I just I had somebody <laughs> in. A, a <laughs> we had we, uh, <laughs> sister Carol, all, all five of the sisters have been uh, tapping for twenty years or so. And we all got certified in EFT when Gwyneth Moss came over about uh, seven years ago. And we did it all together in San Francisco. All five sisters were at the class. And we just had our own little tribe of sister tappers. And now we all have this place in uh, uh, the town near us here with the 21 acres of a retreat center. And we've already had several EFT trainings there, including one with Gwyneth Moss, who came over and taught with us there for three days. And she did quite a bit of, uh, she did family constellation therapies and tapping. We hooked up brainwave monitoring while she was doing it. Um, we had um, your basic um, uh, self-compassion like Kristen Neff teaches. Uh, we did quite a bit of really interesting different types of new inventions on how to do it with tapping with EFT. And Gwyneth is very innovative that way. So she comes up with all these new ways of doing things, and then she uses us for experiment groups. So we've had a lot of fun with her all over um, teaching in, in England, in Ilkley a few times, and then in um, uh, the Netherlands and Prague, and uh, we've, we've traveled around with her. And then she's come here to teach with us a few times, too, over the years. So And at Esalen, too, Esalen Institute. Tapping there at Esalen was a really nice one.
I think it was a week long. Anyway, um, what we have found out through all of these different innovative tactics is that everything seems to work. It's almost like spraying WD-40 into the works. <laughs> and you know how if you take a bottle of WD-40, the, the lubricant we use here in America, I don't know if they have it in Australia, and you just spray it with the large spray over the whole door, it doesn't stop the squeak. But if you put that little little tube on it and spray it right on the hinge with the specific spray going right where the squeak is, it stops it. So EFT, the most important thing I can say is that it needs to be as specific as possible to get that tube right where the point is that needs lubricating and then that will loosen it up and then everything with the memory reconsolidation can happen and cool enough that we now know from hundreds of people we've done this to while hooked up to the mind mirror is that we can see it happen in real time and it, it changes fantastic faster than true. faster than if we had just sat there and done all of the um the normal awakened mind training yeah. Um, my own let me say this real quickly my own personal experience the first time I ever had awakened mind training with Anawise at, at Esalen was that whenever I would do something that was more in the deep theta realm I would click out I would not be able to hear it after the first door down the house of doors I could not remember anything about what was in that first room or the second room or the west of the hallway I didn't hear a thing until she said, oh, okay, now start coming back and wiggling your fingers and toes. I would miss that whole piece in there. So what we finally had to do, because I'd had a lot of traumatic childhood events, we had to go back to a house of doors that was specifically personalized just for me with less possibility of the theta doors opening to scary or dangerous or uncomfortable places. So we had to go to the door on the left that was marked my favorite childhood pet memory or <laughs> the door on the right. The most fun I ever had when I was a child on a trip to Yosemite or something like that. Then I would see it. I would see my cat or my dog and I would see the trip to Yosemite that was fun and it was safe and no trauma happened. And then after one or two of those and tapping uh, in between to get some of that material loosened up then I was able to go through the whole house of doors and actually go into the rooms with the rest of the group and not have to disassociate and leave my body and not come back until it was over so that's a really useful thing to do if you happen to have a person you're trying to do awaken mind training and they keep clicking out and they can't stay awake like Monroe says you know you just clicked out Instead of saying, oh, well, some people just do that and you're still getting it in your subconscious whether you're clicked out or not, go ahead and do some tapping and find out with the EFT which points need to be loosened up about the memories that are stopping you from staying aware throughout all the layers of consciousness. And you'll have a better success at getting access to the deeper layers without clicking out. Like what would be then your um, affirmation or the thing you would tap on? What would you, be you would just say? You would just say something like, even though I cannot stay present when my theta doors open, there's something scary in there and it makes me go away. I deeply accept myself. And then when you tap a couple of rounds like that, even just within five minutes, some little thing will pop up and like, oh, it must be, it must be that time when I was four years old and there was this experience kind of like the handwriting on the walls of your 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 house that says life is dangerous or the universe is not safe or something like that and when you get down to some of those specific events that make you feel like you're not safe and you tap those away or tap them down to a low intensity then those doors can open and they're not scary anymore fantastic Tapping Tapping on a, on a generalized subject will bring up a specific incident within five minutes, even if it's not the incident. It doesn't matter what you start with. You can start with something very small, and it will start lubricating those wheels with the WD-40. And yet you were fairly specific in your opening statement. It wasn't that even though I click out in meditation, it was more that 
even it, even though I click out in the house of doors meditation when I try to enter the doors. Yeah, so, you could say that if you want to be more specific. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm even though I'm frustrated that I can't stay present and I can't hear the whole meditation because I just go away. I deeply accept myself and then go from there to see what it is that might be in the way of staying present. Mm -hmm. And it won't take long to find out. It'll not something will pop up. And, and when we have someone hooked up and their, their spot is popping out that way, it will show as a flare of theta and sometimes delta. And what we see when that happens is we kind of feel what the age happens. So for instance, if it's from about theta down, we figure it's before the age of six. If there's some alpha involved, we figure it's from about 12 years old down. Or if it's mainly delta that pops out when there's an aspect, we figure that that's very early childhood experiences, sometimes even pre-verbal and pre-memory. Wow. That's and it really does. it really does help to have the EEGs monitored at the same time as one is doing these sessions because it helps to guide us in the direction of what we're doing and what age it happened and whether or not it's resolving and whether we're getting reconsolidated. So that's great. That's yeah, fascinating. I think we're all, all set then. Okay. Uh, Donna, one, one little question. When yes. you uh, make up this phrase to repeat, uh, did I get you right that you need to use the kind of the client's language, the words they yes. They, yeah, you so it resonates with them more. Right. You basically are like a, a compassionate, empathetic grandmother who just goes, oh, <laughs> I hear you. Um, but you don't say all this. You just say, okay, that time, uh, you know, I have, I have this memory of the time when, and then you just repeat the same words back and yeah. have them repeat that as they're tapping. You don't make up new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It was a great example. I mean, I, I'm fascinated with the whole horse, <laughs> horse stepping, <laughs> surrogate horse stepping. You can do it. You can do it for your dogs and cats too. If they happen to be sick, you can just, you know, we, we had this uh, cat that had a, a bladder infection and it, it couldn't use the litter box. And so we tapped and her name was blue and we tapped. Okay. Even though I'm blue and I just can't, my, my, kidneys just don't work and she was getting old she was about 20 so she uh you know i'm still a good cat and everybody loves me and i'm still a good cat you know and then we started tapping as if we were her and within five minutes she was over using the litter box so it worked and then you have to go back to being yourself because you don't want to stay the cat you know yeah. could you do this for somebody who's terminally ill you can you just tune in to them empathize with them, feel what they might be feeling, imagine what their needs and feelings are, tap on all of those as if you were them, what they would be saying that you imagine or you channel, and then just tap it down until you feel at peace inside. And if you want, you can even go as far as asking their spirit for permission first before you work with their spirit in a, from a distance like that. And if, they, if you get a peaceful feeling about it or an actual yes, then go ahead and do what you want to do surrogately and, you know, send them energy through your own body, being able to feel what is resolving and then go back to being yourself when you're done. And you can also do this with uh, relationships. If you're having a difficult relationship with someone, uh, rather than pulling them in and tapping on them, you tap on yourself. Uh, to clear everything that you might be feeling uh, that would be interrupting your relationship with them, and then you can tap surrogately for them as well. And this frequently will uh, clear up uh, relationship issues. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the places you can have a resource that's easy to uh, download a whole book on how tapping works and the little um, quick version of it is uh, EFTUniverse.com. And there's a free download of an 80 page, um, is that Susan? An, an 80 page, somebody uh, is just trying to reach me. But um, I'm supposed to go do a house call on a lady that got run over by a car in a parking lot. So I have to work on her. She can't leave her house. Um, she got a 
pelvis broke in two places. And, and I taught her how to have her, her um, 19 month old grandson do tapping out of the cute little book. It's called um, Gorilla Thumps and Bear Hugs. And uh, you basically do, uh, it's Alex Ortner wrote it and it has cute little pictures and you do the bushy eyebrows where you tap up here is little birds sitting in the bushes up in your eyebrows and they tap on you. And then eagle eyes and lion tears and dragon breath and uh, wolf, wolf howling at the moon, oh, like that, tapping here and then here on your, uh, and then there's, um, on your chest is the gorilla thump, you know, and then down here you wrap your arms around and you do yourself a bear hug, and then you do monkeys up on the top of your head and make monkey noises. And this 19 month old boy just loved it. He loved all the pictures, and every time he would be um, kind of having a tantrum or whatever, his grandma would start doing all these animals, and then he'd be smiling within a minute. So it, it really helps to disassociate from whatever the tantrum is and get into all these cute little animal pictures while tapping and it immediately changes the child's uh, behavior. So it, it helped him to get to sleep when he was supposed to go down for a nap and that type of thing. And then there's all the different little EFT books that you can get. This one's EFT for back pain. There's a whole series of these little books that are done by Gary Craig and um, the EFT uh, publishings. And then the easiest way to get people to do EFT is just to go on YouTube and pick out somebody who's a good EFT master to follow along with. Like, um, I think there's probably several hundred of them that are worth watching. And, um, and little songs for children where they have words and lyrics set up with the music and, and tapping along and dancing along, little EFT dances. And, um, there's, yeah. They're all over the world. Everybody from uh, genocide survivors in Rwanda to natural disaster survivors in any kind of uh, earthquake or hurricane. Two years ago when I was in Nepal during the big earthquake, I had everyone there tapping, including little children that didn't speak English, that were uh, the Tibetan monastery children. And it really helped everybody to calm down so that those 50 aftershocks we lived through after the big one, the 7.9, um, we we had so many aftershocks it was hard to sleep so everybody in the group that was my friend they were my friends that were in the, the trekking group in the Himalayas we were up at 12,000 feet when it happened they came into my room and we had wall-to-wall -wall bed in my room and every time there'd be another aftershock that first night which was every few minutes uh, we would all just start tapping and then they made it through the night and they said sorry we have to stay with you because we're going to just do this all night long they didn't want to be alone <laughs> So I was the one that was the most uh, calm because I was, you know, I come from California. We have earthquakes here, but those people from England and Scotland had never been through them before. and They didn't know how to act. So they just came in my room and we all did tapping together. And it, it really helps. I mean, we just use it all the time. Uh, we even use it on inanimate objects sometimes, like a truck that won't start or a computer that won't work. <laughs> And uh, quantum physics, I guess, explains that somehow or other we're affecting the field and then the truck started. So I, I don't know if that was true or not, but it worked. <laughs> Everybody else had tried to get it started and it wouldn't work. The, the tow truck and all those mechanics were poking around and they couldn't get it going. So my sister Nancy went to the back of the truck and did it with nobody watching. Even though I just don't want to start and I'm a diesel engine and I just don't want to start. I just can't start. <laughs> I'm a good truck. I'm a really good, dependable truck. And she did it, and she tapped as if she were the truck. And then she went around front. She says, do you mind if I just try that one more time? She got in, turned the key, it started right up. So I don't know. We, we don't know the answers. But... <laughs> That's it's like a miracle. It's like a miracle. <laughs> yeah, I, it, a lot of times it does seem that way. So... I have to go, but blessings, and it's so nice to have this time together, and we look forward to many more fun things we do together, tapping or not. At least we know that we're all connected, and we have proof of that. Thank you so very much, both of you. It was delightful, okay. and we look forward to seeing you again. And people may well write you with questions. And okay. Um, we, uh, we appreciate you, and okay. behold the tapping energy light flows in you. Uh, How could you patient. do a matrix um, reconfiguration on your physical body? 
I mean, imagine your body as a matrix and well, yeah. And what you would, if there is some issue, you know, physical issue that you wanted to deal with, um, or you could actually work with dreaming, depending on how you, there's a whole technique of working with dreams and bringing those up as well. Uh, but um, <laughs> if you have some sort of thing you're, you're healing uh, in your physical body, uh, you would tap on that. Uh, it, you know, it's, it, one, like for pain, okay, what they do is there's a technique called the color of pain. Uh, you would go into, I have this physical issue. Okay, what does it look like? How big is it? Is what shape does it have? Is it, you know, what color would it be? How does it feel? Is it hot, cold, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then you just tap on that. I have this big blob that's all rough and jaggedy and it's like green and, you know, I don't like how it feels because it's it hurts and so on. And you just tap on that. Shrink it down. And that physical issue will frequently just go away. It was a pain issue. Uh, so that's another way of, of working with it. Uh, Things, uh, you know, whatever it is that you have a dream that you want to work on. Uh, so you can tap on, you know, whatever's in the dream, whatever content in the dream, you know, affects you and you feel like you need to work with that. Uh, some people have used it actually for training lucid dream. I've never actually been terribly That's awesome. successful with that but uh, approach, but, uh, you know, uh, one woman said that she tapped every night when she would go to sleep, that she was going to have a lucid dream, that she would be conscious in her dreams, and, you know, and I think it took her a month of tapping, and she would tap during the day, too, whenever she had to think about it, especially when she would go to sleep at night, and eventually she began to have lucid dreams. Um, so that's, a, you know, if I were that dedicated, I probably would do the same thing myself. So far, I haven't. You know, this makes me um, think about that delta you saw on the horse, that um, yeah. high amplitude theta and delta, and those yeah. being not only the horse frequencies, but the human bodies or the human psyche's physical frequencies. Right, right. And that makes me think about, you know, the process through which this works. I, I know, and you explained clearly that it really is the uh, acupuncture meridians. Um, and I wonder if what's really happening is that, you could tap on anything, physical, mental, emotional, uh, for yourself or for another person, and um, that you're affecting the matrix of the body on a multi-frequency level so that it becomes a body, mind, emotions, and spirit reconfiguration. Yeah. 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 I would, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, if you wanted to work on integration of, you know, the various levels, uh, I would say just start out with wherever you feel you need some integration of uh, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, and just begin to, to reintegrate, uh, whatever issues come up, uh, you know, and tap on them. Or physicality, yeah, even physicality. though even though my left and right brain are hemispherically Im imbalanced and my exactly. gamma is out of control. And <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, I, you know, there's no limit as to what you can try tapping on. It'd be interesting to see uh, how that uh, how that works out. <laughs> we'll test some things this week and let you know. Yeah, let us let us know what uh, if you come up with some new ideas about how to use this with uh, wake and mind training. That would be really fascinating. Well, it sounds like you have all the great ideas now, and we sure appreciate your sharing them. That was well. Really that's that's it's out there for anybody who you know uh, come up comes up with new ideas about how to how to do, be creative. You know, this is basically creativity time. You know, just throwing it out there and come up with some new ideas, you know, different ways of, actually Gary Craig uh, said a long time ago, in fact, he was offering some sort of reward or something. He said, if you can come up with some new technique on how to use EFT that hasn't been done before, I'll give you, you know, a hundred bucks or something. You know, it's like, um, but we hadn't thought about, you know, well, we should develop all these techniques uh, working with the awakened mind training and how to balance brain waves and 
uh, all of these uh, different emotional issues that come up, you know? It's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Okay, guys. Wonderful stuff. Much appreciated. See you all later.